Activist to me means seeing injustice occur and standing up and doing something about it. Now there are so many different platforms, I think, for people to exercise their activism. It's making a decision in your daily life to make a difference for someone. My name is Jeff Blackwell. I am a gun activist. I think that the way that I live my life and the way that I promote what I truly believe in makes me a silent activist. My name is Julian Dow and I attend Georgetown Day School. I guess if I were to describe myself, I love to call into question the powers that be in the environment that I'm in. Understanding my existence as a black man and my role in my environment and my community. I understand that there's socioeconomic differences between my classmates and I, and there's also racial differences. I noticed that students of color didn't really have a space to talk uh, with each other about the things that they were going through. I was like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a group where we meet once a month, and it's really more of like a conversation, but we still kind of get to air those problems. There's definitely security and solidarity. It doesn't have to be loud. It doesn't have to be public. It's just about taking a stand about what's important to you and then acting on it. My name is Bonnie Neist, I'm President and CEO of Ziesman, and we're a branding and marketing agency. Some of the areas that we've been most passionate about are women's health, because that's under attack, empowering minority businesses, and civic engagement. We have a real love for doing that for nonprofit organizations. We're in the business of creating change, and we decided after the events of this year to really double down on that, to really look at ways that we can add our talents to the conversation. What is moving us forward is people exercising you know, their own rights and their own ability to engage civically. I think the biggest issue facing the United States is security itself. I think of activism as something that I support, and for good reason. It's well thought out, and it's about playing by the rules. I'm a licensed carry holder. I think everyone should arm themselves with a handgun in an effort to protect themselves from a life or death situation. This is an article from the Houston Chronicle in November of 1982 and it describes a situation where I was held hostage at a local uh, hospital here in Houston. I had a gun held to my head for four hours. I support people being responsible when they have a firearm in just everyday conversations with friends, with family, with work associates, and I go to classes. You can't really tell I'm carrying a gun. So in the event I need it, I can come over here and kind of look scared, but it's already locked and loaded, and then I draw. Recently, I went to the Houston Police Department and they had a seminar on how you should be responsible in a situation where someone might draw a firearm in a church assembly. It's about being responsible and about training. I think that the way that I live my life and the way that I promote what I truly believe in makes me a silent activist. In 1997, I got a knock on my door from the uh, DEA who said that they had an anonymous tip that I was selling marijuana. I uh, was growing marijuana for my own personal consumption because I wanted the best that I could get. I was convicted of manufacturing controlled substance in 1998 and served 90 days in county jail, which was hard because I didn't believe that I had done anything wrong. I've always believed that one should live by a moral code. Part of being an American is being able to question 
what the government says we can and can't do and make those decisions for ourselves. We're at Bull Run Craft Cannabis. I'm about to give you guys the Bull Run tour. Perfect. Yeah, that's an advertisement <laughs> shot. <laughs> After 20 plus years of being a felon, I uh, took advantage of the Oregon Marijuana Forgiveness Act and um, I got my record expunged. And that following January, I applied for my Oregon recreational license with my two business partners and we became one of the first eight recreational cannabis businesses in Oregon. In a democratic nation, you have to be an activist if you want to uphold the true kind of criteria of a democracy. America was founded on this idea of making sure that everyone is free and equal. It came out that there was an offensive picture that really hurt the African American community in our school. We organized a coalition right after. We met for about two weeks in partnership with our principal and we said, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a lesson plan and it's going to be distributed to the whole student body. It's going to be senior led. We had the LGBTQ plus students speak up about it. We had the other students of color who didn't identify as African American speak up about it. And we also had white allies speak up about it. And I think that's really amazing. After the election, I think we learned that there were more issues than we were aware of. We weren't necessarily experiencing them ourselves. California is a bit of a bubble, honestly. Uh, I live in a place that is diverse. It's something I take for granted. Um, and something I really didn't realize is as common for other people until I looked at some of my colleagues on the national level, colleagues of mine who are women business owners or minority business owners. I believe that we're somewhat split as Americans. You can see it with our presidential elections, our local elections. We're struggling. And I don't know if there's hope in sight, but it's been a challenging year. And I can't think it reflects our past, and it also is a reflection of what very well might occur in the future. Because it's so easy, you know, to be divided. We should be able to move forward and have a respectful dialogue, but each participant in that dialogue has to be willing to go into that conversation and be open to change. And if they're not, then how do we do that? I want to be able to be that force to bring people together. You're allowed to stand up for what you believe in, even if what you believe in isn't what everybody else believes in. And you're allowed to preach what you believe in and convert people to your side. You know, it's not about being born here. That's easy. It is a journey. It's not just something that's on your birth certificate. We need to come together in a very responsible, intelligent uh, manner. Something that would motivate a concept of working together, whether it's in politics, whether it's in race, whether it's just in, you know, just everyday living, even on the job, within our families. I have a very loving family, and I know that loving families like that exist all across the country, and a loving family, I feel like, is American in a sense. When big issues are brought up, people sort of divide themselves, but when you get those people face to face in a room, they can usually find a common ground. I believe that there's a lot of really good people in this country, and I feel that we're misrepresented right now. Every person has their sphere of influence. We can all be activists in our own lanes.